Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Flight Controller Therapy and today we'll be updating INAV. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. So what do we need to do when we want to update iNav? Well, the thing with iNav is there's two components to it. There's the configurator, which is what you run on your computer, and there's the firmware. And confusingly, both can have different version numbers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to update the configurator. So if I launch version 2.4 configurator, what it will actually do is tell us that there's a new version out. So what we can do is click on the download new app, which will open up our web browser and take us straight to the releases page. Now the version at the top of this page should be the newest release, but be careful because sometimes it will be a beta release or a release candidate. Always go for the one with nothing underneath. If, if it says RC123X or beta, then leave it, just go scroll down well, you can click on releases there um, and scroll down to the next. See, see this one's RC2. You, you don't want to use that. You want to use the highest one without any of that sort of stuff on it. So we can click on our 2.5. And if you scroll to the bottom, sorry, all this stuff here is the release notes um, and important information for when you update. But what we want to do is download the latest ver or this version for whichever operating system you're using. So I'm going to stick that on my desktop. So I'll close that down. And while that's downloading, what we can actually do is have a look at release notes. If they're on here. Right, so they point to the readme.md file, which maybe is the same as the release notes. If not, the release notes are visible in configurator, so um, we can always look at them there. Actually, sorry, this is gonna be the release notes for the configurator, completely ignore that. We'll come back when it's downloaded. Right, so the new version of configurator is downloaded. So what we need to do now is extract it. So I'm just gonna do extract here because I know inside is a folder. So what it will present you with is a, this INAV configurator folder. And what I'm actually gonna do is rename this to 2.5. And you can open it and click it and run it directly from here if you wish and leave it on your desktop. But I'm gonna stick it into my program files um, folder. So we now have it in our program files configurator 2.5. And what I'm gonna do is right click on that, copy and then paste shortcut. So now I can close this down and that's our shortcut to INAV. And I'm gonna rename it to 2.5 INAV configurator. I've got in the habit of putting the number first because if you see on this one, I've got 2.4 but you can't actually see it. So I've put 2.5 INAV now. So what we can do now and get rid of these, we have 2.5, we just run this and this is now the latest version of configurator. So when that boots up, you can see we're on version 2.5.0. So the next step is we need to update the model. So how do we go about doing that? So if we head over to the desk, I have my mini AR wing. So what we first need to do is get the flight controller plugged in. So they're quite handy, those 90 degree USBs. And plug that into a USB port. At the moment, we don't need a transmitter or anything like that. We're just running off a flight controller. So now we boot it up, we can get back over to the desk. Actually, I'll just do a full desk, I mean, screen. 
Um, the first thing we're going to do is actually connect and we're going to go down to CLI and we're going to do diff all. And then what we can do is copy this out You, you can do save as a file, but I'm just old school. <laughs> and what, what I'm going to do is I've just opened a blank notepad and I'm going to paste it in here for the minute. So we have our, our settings effectively from our current flight controller. So now if I disconnect and we're going to go into the firmware flasher. Now, what we need to do is first of all, we need to choose which flight controller we're working on. So if I bring back up the default, it will actually give the target here. So whatever you're running on your current flight controller, if you look here, just after INAV slash, it will give you the um, firmware target that you're looking for in this list here. So get that out of the way. We want Matek F405. So that's our target selected. Now we need to choose the firmware. And again, actually, it'll, it'll only it'll be good releases here. If you tick this un show unstable release, you'll get the release candidates, all that sort of stuff. But if we just want the stable releases, it will show up here. Now notice that the firmware, the latest version of the firmware for the flight controller is 2.5.1, even though configurator is 2.5.0. So if you have a problem uh, with your flight controller uh, and report it on like INAV Fixed Wing Group or the INAV uh, Group or Fixed Wing RC Rebels on Facebook, make sure that you actually give the correct firmware number. Because if you were to say 2.5.0, because that's the number up here, there are known bugs in 2.5.0 which may mask for the problem that you're actually having. So if you've actually got 2.5.1, make sure you say that rather than just looking at this configurator number up here. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that full chip arrays is on and the rest of it I leave standard. But, oh sorry, then we load the um, firmware. So that will download this target and this firmware from the INAV site. So what we need to do now, which is really important, is check out the release notes. And this will give you any heads up of any known bugs in the software, but also any update procedures. So it's not actually, well, that's bad, I know. Very bad. Because I know that there's an update procedure that we have to follow if we're going from 2.4 to 2.5. The... Um, it will probably, if I go to 2.5.1 and load firmware, it will probably show us. So this is all the information that should have still been in that 2.5.1 where it's really new. So if we're updating from 2.4, we need to modify the diff because the auxiliary channels, um, in particular the mode switches, have all changed to a now a permanent ID. So in the future, we won't ever need to change them again but we need to change them now. So if you have an older version, they, they give a link here. So what we need to do is um, we can carry on with the firmware update, but before we put the diff back onto the flight controller, we need to modify it. So what we'll do, we'll go back to 2.5.1, load the firmware, and now we're gonna click flash. So most of the time these days, it automatically puts the flight controller in DFU mode. But if you, uh, if it doesn't do that for you, there's two things you can try. First of all, you could try connecting, going to the CLI and typing DFU. But to be fair, if this doesn't work and automatically put it in DFU, that probably won't work either. So the next step would be to disconnect the USB and on the flight controller itself, on on it on the F four hundred five here, if it will focus. There's a little button just just down here. This white button. If you hold that down, it will put it in DFU mode when you power it back in. So they're the two options. If that still doesn't work, 
there's a product called um, by Impulse RC called a driver fixer. And if you run that, it will pretty much fix any any problem you got. There, there's stuff um, called like Zydag or whatever, but that's an absolute nightmare to use. So Impulse RC driver fixer, which I'll put a link to, is a really simple, straightforward um, tool to use. But anyway, our program is now successful. So if we connect, we now come up with this. If this, I believe, was there in 2.4, but if you're coming from an older version, you wouldn't have seen this. So it basically lets you set some default parameters to begin with. So we're going for a plane, aeroplane covers, flying wings, planes, forward swept wings. If if it's not a boat or a quad, it's probably a plane or a rover. Sorry. So we're going for aeroplane which will apply a few things, do a save and reboot. And then we'll, we'll come back to us. So again, because we're for most of what we're going to do here, we're going to use our diff file. The only thing I'm going to do is go into um, on screen display. And I'm going to upload the fonts that I like. So you can choose whatever you like. I actually like the default font. I know people slate it, but I actually like it. It's nice and small. It's easy enough to read. So there we go. Let's upload the font. And now when we add our OSD on, it should already be all set up. We don't need to worry about anything. Sometimes you get this fail to close serial port and it won't let you get back on. If I click connect, it might work. If not, just unplug the USB, plug it back in. It'll be fine. As I say, for the minute, we're going to ignore all these warnings. What we're going to do is head over to um, the iNav GitHub. We'll go to iNav and we'll go to the firmware. We'll go to the releases. So we can see the 2.5 Point one is a bug fix release, which, as, as I said before, if, you, if you're reporting a problem on on our fixed wing group on Facebook or fixed wing RFC rebels or any any other group where you go, make sure you do say the right version of the firmware, not the configurator version. But the two first digits, the configurator and the firmware, should match. If they don't, you could have problems. So make sure that it is all related. So has it actually got the update on here? No. So right, let's go to 2.5.0 and get the release notes. There we go. So this is the tool that we want is this box to perm. So if we click on that, there we go. So there's the online converter. Let's paste the whole diff in. But if we go down to the orc section, you can see it's actually changed it. And the numbers on here will be different. So yes, yeah, 44, it was 34. So that's all good. So now what we can do is take this diff. We copy all that. And if we go back to CLI, what we can do is paste that in here. Oh, we've got a couple of errors up there. It doesn't like that for some reason. It's logical switches for something. I don't think I've actually got logical switches on this plane anyway. All right, so I'll just save that because I. I know we haven't got logical switches on here at the moment. So it's probably just something I was testing with. So we can ignore that. But now if we come back in, we can see everything is fine apart from navigation, which is expected. It's not got a GPS connection. There's no battery in it. But everything else is done. We're calibrated. Our OSD is how we like it. Uh, LEDs, if we've got those, 
I'll be doing a video on LEDs soon. Um, but the most important one to check is the modes. So this is where we do need a transmitter. I have to try and remember where I've put mine. All right, so I've just got my transmitter. I'm just switching over to that model. And what we need to do is check our modes. So let me see. Let's go the other way. There we go. All right, so what I'll do is I'll get this up here and we can see we're in manual mode at the moment. Actually, I'll enable the voice and then we'll, we'll be able to hear it as well. So at the moment we should be in manual, which is, oh, I need to get rid of that one. That was from testing. Bad Darren. All right, so we're in manual mode. The next one is acro, which, oh yeah, we don't need to worry about the beeper and LEDs. That's fine. The OSD, so yeah, no flight modes are selected, so that's Acro, Horizon. Horizon, you can see it's on Horizon there. Alright, so 3D Cruise. So we've got Cruise there, and we should have Altitude Hold as well. Yep. Loiter, so we've got position hold and alt hold. I, I believe you don't need, need alt hold anymore, but I've, it's not going to hurt. <laughs> return and home. return to home, so that's there. These are obviously not lighting up blue because the plane's not flying and I've not got a GPS fix. So those are all fine. So other switches, I've got a home position reset there. Got launch mode. Auto tune, Auto -tune yep. Auto -tune auto trim yep and we got LED, leds and beeper, and beeper. ah beepers on the wrong channel that should be on channel nine okay so that's that's fixed maybe watch out for that if you've got a beeper uh osd so there we go, that's, I've got that on the, the uh, rotary, rotary pot so I can have four or well, five effectively OSDs. So standard OSD, OSD Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3, and then OSD off. So they're all working fine. So yeah, the only thing that seemed to have a little issue was beeper, but that could have been wrong in the first place so it may be worth checking that so if we save that that's our iNav updated with all done everything will now go out and work uh, as expected or as it, at least it was with the previous version so as I say with the 2.4 to 2.5 you just need to worry about this modes thing but everything else should have copied over exactly as it was. So the mix is already set up. Um, yeah, fail safe should be as it was. So we're on return to home. So yeah, that's basically how you go about updating iNav. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, if you did, a uh, thumbs up would be great. And please subscribe and click the bell icon. It, the subscription really helps my channel and the bell icon will alert you when there's a new video out if you don't like it then please feel free to leave a thumbs down but please leave a comment and let me know what i could do to improve the videos be, to turn that thumbs down into a thumbs up so thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you on the next one get out there fly your planes like you stole them and have a great time see you all later bye bye